Okay, let me wrap this up with one, uh, I guess, uh, slightly less trivial uh, calculation. Ever, everyone okay with this calculation? Yes. Okay, uh, one slightly less trivial. Okay, so expectation value of momentum is zero. What about p squared? Not momentum, but momentum squared. Is that still going to be zero? No, it sh like intuitively here, it shouldn't be zero because um, intuitively, this is what you know of the, I don't know, momentum distribution. The distribution of the different state as a kind of function of momentum eigenstate. What you have in this setup is you have a one value at the, uh, where momentum value of, I don't know, eight, um, momentum of 2h over uh, nh over 2l and plus nh over 2l and another value at another state at the value of minus nh over 2l, right? So that's why when you took the average of these two values, you got zero. But um, when you are dealing with momentum squared, when you are dealing with the momentum squared, then it changes. Because this thing squared is not minus this squared, it's just plus this thing squared. So if you look at the distribution of momentum squared, it would look like just at a single value, n squared h squared over 4l squared, you will have all the state and nothing else anywhere else. So you should get back to what essentially what relates to the absolute value of momentum, not momentum with a sign. So let's see if that's what we get. We are going to do expectation value of momentum squared. Yep. So when you do that, then uh, let me just make the changes as I go. So before I was measuring momentum, just one factor of momentum, if I'm measuring two factors of momentum, then I kind of just apply this twice to that thing squared. So if I'm doing that, uh, I'm applying this momentum operator twice. So for this coefficient, it looks like they're just multiplying together. Uh, minus i squared is just minus 1, and I have h bar squared. And now I have the second position derivative. Good. All right, uh, let me imagine pulling out the same factors as I did before. I still have the same factor 2 over L. Uh, okay, now I don't have. Um, instead of h bar over i, now what I have is, uh, let me do this uh, in purple the way I've been doing. What I have now is minus h bar squared. Yeah. Uh, when I take the, this derivative twice, I'm going to pull out this pack factor of n pi over l twice. So there's this squared there, n pi over l twice. Um, and I guess I should now do the rest of the calculation, write down what the rest of the expressions look like. So I have, um, let me write down the ones I haven't handled. I have this, sine of n pi x over l. And as I take the derivative, the first derivative gives me cosine of x. And then the second derivative of that gives me minus sine of x. So what I have here is minus sine of n pi x over l. And I already took care of these factors that come out. Um, integral for, uh, uh, with respect to dx, and that's it. So let me do some uh, quick simplifications. So this minus sine cancels out this minus sign, so my overall answer is going to turn out to be positive, which is good. 
these two are the exact same factors. So let me just get rid of one and say this is the whole thing squared. Didn't we do that uh, integral before? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you remember doing that integral before, and we ended up with, was it 1 half? No, it was, um, the integral was L over 2. That's the integral we did. All right, so I guess we are all done. We just have to work out all the factors to see what cancels. So this 2 cancels this 2. Um, this L cancels this L. Um, then I guess that's it. Um, so collecting all the other factors that remain, we have n pi, um, let me write it this way. Um, n squared pi squared h bar squared over um, L. Is that correct answer? If you're not sure, um, this, there's one more thing you can do. You can rewrite h bar as h over 2 pi squared. Um, L squared, right? Um, yeah, L squared, sorry. L squared. So if you write it out that way, then what you have is um, then what you have is uh, pi squared cancels out pi squared. So you have um, so this is the simplified version. Um, this is equal to n squared h squared over um, I guess. I can write this 4L squared. And now if I want, I can put, put it into this form. Um, let's see. Um, square of H over 2L over N. 2L over N. I'm not doing much um, since we got to this expression. I'm just rewriting into a form to try to remind you of De Broglie relationship. Right? Momentum is Planck's constant divided by wavelength. So that squared is the expectation value of momentum squared. So we did these simple calculations with um, these very simple states. And what I will tell you is that um, uh, this is a big chunk of quantum mechanics. When you do the semester long upper division quantum mechanics, calculating expectation value is a big chunk of that. And um, we'll use it a little bit in this class, but not too much. Um, anything beyond this does get fairly complicated. So um, like there's a limited amount we can do in either homework or exam, but I just want you to show you that there exists this mathematical procedure, which will give you a result that represents what you should be measuring. And uh, we already talked about the kind of with this operator, but these were very specific, they were applicable in a very special circumstances. Calculating expectation value, it works in all circumstances. Wherever there's physical observable, you can take an expectation value and get something reasonable. <laughs>